and Hannah, how old are you? Hannah is nine years old. If there's anybody out here that's 15 and below, would you please raise your hand? Look around. Everybody look around and talk to them. There you go. Okay, we've had two groups of people to raise their hands. We've had the 65-year-olds, and we've had everybody below 15 with Hannah, my new friend here. Now, I'm talking to those of us that did not raise our hand. You see, this generation gave us a country. Amen. Amen. I'm talking to us who didn't raise our hand. We're to give this country to this generation. So I'm calling on everybody to say that the generation that gave us this free country, would you do me a favor and make a pledge to deliver our country to this generation in the same way as that? That's why we're here fighting. That's why we're here standing for this, because we represent here the stewardship, the greatest generation, and the generation that we don't want to put in debt and in bondage that can't have the same opportunity that we've had. So that's why we're here to fight. Thank you. Our senator's office and visit with them. Actually, well, they're busy, I guess. I, I, we, we talked to Donna Kay in Blanche Lincoln's office, and Senator Senator uh, Pryor actually called us to, to visit with him, and we're very thankful for that opportunity. One of the disturbing things I want to make public today for the very first time is what was said in Blanche Lincoln's office. And it wasn't said by Blanche Lincoln, but it was said by her representative. And I had four other people in there to confirm it. I'm a home builder, and of course, I'm struggling through the changes that takes place. So as I go to Blanche Lincoln's office and I talk to Donna Kay, and I sit there and I say, you know, capitalism I know. I'm not maybe the best at it, but that's all I know is capitalism. But what I'm seeing over here is called socialism. Yeah. Hang on. Hang on. I said, this I know. Over here is what I don't know. I said, what are you delivering to us? And this, listen. She said, how about something in the middle? of the United States Senator Blanche Lincoln told me, how about something in the middle? Vote out of office. I said, you know, you can either you can almost just be either pregnant or not pregnant, but you can't be almost pregnant. So I recommend if you didn't like that comment, like I didn't like it, you might want to call her office and confront her on that. So we had a talk with Mark Pryor's office. And we had the opportunity to discuss a lot of topics, and of course health care is the issue. And when we were visiting with him, he wants to consider it. Now, what I want to do is I want to give a summary of this is the concern that I have that I need to leave with you with the few minutes that I have. As I sit there and I said, I'm not the smartest kid on the block, so you got to help me out with this. This is some high-tech, fancy talk stuff y'all want to do. But it appears to me that if this is the House bill for health insurance, and I'm not here to debate if it should be this or that because we're here to decide if you're going to vote yay or nay, so I want to know, when this happens, and you say, yes, this is what we're going to do, guess what? It disappears. 
It's gone. So all that they're talking about disappears once they approve it. So the senator over here doesn't want to talk about the House bill because they've got their own bill over here. They got the health bill on the, on the health committee and then the finance committee, and they want to form a, a bill over here. A trigger bill. Well, this one's empty. See, it's not there. So now they're working on a, on, a, on a Senate bill, but guess what? We let them vote on that. Boom! It disappears. Where does it go next? Conference. The committee. The, it goes into a little special room. And then a, a few special people get to go in, and it's kind of like the Pope waiting for the smoke to come out. And then they come out with some special bill. Nobody knows. And then they get to be able to decide how fast they get to vote on it back in the House and the Senate. So the question is, do you really trust that they can send the people in that little bitty room and make up any rules that they want about your health care? Then you cannot let it get past the House. You know, if you want to talk about reform, then show me the architect. I'm a pilot. I'm a commercial rated pilot. I can fly for money. But you know, I'd like to know the designer of the airplane before I fly it. Who's the designer of the healthcare system? Does anybody know who's behind it? Do you want to fly in that airplane? No. So we can't give it to them. No. We just can't. No. So you got to keep calling and keep calling yes. and keep calling. And then they got right on the hill of it, but don't get tired for me, please. But listen, they got the cap and tax coming or the cap and trade. It's going to cap the employment and it's going to send them overseas on the trade. We will be history if we let cap and trade go any further. It's a no also. And then when they want to come back and talk to we, the board of directors, and hear and show us a good plan under good business practices, under good reform, the ability to show us how it works, then we might consider it. But as it stands now, the only option we have is not in discussion, it's not in debate, it's a yay or nay. So what is it going to be on this health care reform? Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Bob. Hey, Jay, Dad, y'all, we've got some great leaders from around the state. I'm going to introduce Jackie Martin from Heber Springs. She's going to talk to us a little bit. Jackie, give her a welcome. I think you're the largest crowd I've ever spoken to, so bear with me. First off, I'd like to acknowledge all the Tea Party organizers across Arkansas because we would not be here today without their tireless efforts. so we can acknowledge you. <laughs> These people work tirelessly to fight for our rights and to let their community members know the facts, the facts about the issues our nation and state face today. So I'd like to acknowledge Bob McCready from Polk County, John Ellison from Logan County, uh, Leslie Chestnut from White County, Lori Matheson from Washington County, Richard Pastor from Baxter County, Ed Harrison from Benton County, Jim Simon, State Director for Arkansas Patriots from Stone County, Doug Myers from Pulaski County, and of course, I'd also like to acknowledge and personally thank Jeannie Bullsworth with, with Secure Arkansas for her tireless efforts to provide a voice for the taxpayers of Arkansas and our state legislatures to prevent illegal aliens from getting state benefits. 